Hey y'all, this is going to be my two week uh, postpartum update and Holden's two week update. Sorry if there's lots of interruptions in this video. No Edison. Uh, Edison is in here playing in my bedroom and Holden is laying down next to me. He just got done nursing. Um, Movie. Movie. Yeah, Movie. so let's just start with me, because I don't know how long this is going to last. Um, let's see, my incision is great. It looks good. I went to the doctor yesterday. He didn't see, excuse me, <laughs> he didn't see any problems. Uh, he did say there was some nodding, but that's a good sign of healing and that everything is, you know, perfect. So, um that's good. Uh, let's see. Postpartum, this is TMI, but postpartum bleeding is sporadic. It's not crazy. It's not um, insane anymore. It's kind of just normal, period-like, so that's good. Um, breastfeeding is going really good. Uh, there's some days where I can tell that he is, like, because every day is not the same with, with me with breastfeeding. Like, some days I feel like I produce tons, and then some days I feel like all he wants to do is eat and eat because I don't feel like there's enough. So, I don't know. It's I'm still kind of like one of those people that I trust my body that it knows what to do and that it will, you know, make enough milk for the baby and it will, you know, provide what I need for him. And so I try not to worry about it, but when he's like, there's days when he finishes nursing on both sides and he's starving to death afterwards, he, you know, and I have to start all over again, I feel like, okay, are you feeling me here, buddy? Like, what is the deal? But, um, you know, he is gaining weight, and so I know he's getting what he needs, but it's still really hard sometimes to just trust yourself, but I'm trying to do that. That's what I was told by my doctor, um, and if there was a true issue, you know, there would be signs there, so, because I did try to pump, and I got, like, literally a tablespoon total out of both boobs, like, a tablespoon, and that was very discouraging to me, but, you know, I've, in the middle of, of my letdown, like, unlatched him, to see and like he has a mouthful of milk and it's coming out like so I know that like he's able to get more than that out but just to see that and just to like know that if I did need to pump and that was all that I could get out like that was really kind of discouraging to me but right now I'm not focusing on pumping or trying to have any milk saved up or anything like that I'm just focusing on him nursing as much as possible and making as much milk as possible, for, you know, for him to drink on demand, so, um, yeah, what else, um, as far as emotions and feelings and all of that that come after you have a baby, it has been really hard for me, um, very, I've been very emotional, it is not easy to have a toddler and a newborn, especially when you didn't sleep at all the night before. Um, you have to get up the next morning and get your family ready for the day. And your newborn finally is asleep, and you could go to sleep, but your toddler is up, and you know he's ready for the day. He's ready to play. He wants breakfast. He wants to do this and that. And you know, before I had Holden, Edison was on a really good nap schedule. Like every day, he napped for two hours or more you know, went to bed around the same time, but since then, since our lives have just kind of been crazy, he some days doesn't nap at all, and so that, not that I was able to really nap before, but now I want to, because, you know, I can get him to sleep, hold him to sleep pretty easily. Um, good job. And now that he, you know, I could possibly take a little bit of a nap, he doesn't want to. So, it does make during the day being so tired and, you know, so focused on the baby, um, hard emotionally to get things finished and to feel like you're being a good parent to your other children. You know, I, there's so much, Edison's too, so I mean, 
he wants to go and do and run around and be outside and, you know, play games and do puzzles. And sometimes I have to tell him, no, that I can't right now or, you know, you have to wait. And that's very hard for him to understand. And he's trying. He's doing really good. He's not lashing out or anything. It's a baby. But I just feel bad. I feel sorry for him sometimes. And uh, Eden, she understands, but you can also tell from her a little bit that, you know, she kind of feels like, why did you do this? You know, you already were so busy and, you know, with Edison, why would you, like, she thinks of it logically, like, why would you add more craziness to this, you know, when you could, because I think she felt like before that there was times I couldn't give her all the attention that she wanted, and, um, that hurts me, like, makes me feel a little sad, but I know this will get better, and, um, I'm trying really, I'm doing everything I can not to, to get depressed and to feel angry towards anyone because that's usually the first emotion that someone feels of depression is anger. You know, they want to, their brain and their body and everything wants to blame someone for why they feel this way. You know, so you feel angry or anger towards people or or things, or whatever, and I'm trying really hard not to feel that way, because I know this is no one's fault, you know, this is what we wanted, this was, you know, God's path for us, but it is really hard sometimes to just take a moment and say, okay, you know, breathe, this is okay, you're going to make it through this, you know, everything's going to be okay, um, so yeah, it's not, it's not a walk in the park, it's definitely not, and you know, I have some friends of mine, you know, who are expecting their third baby, and, you know, when they ask me, how's it been, or, you know, I don't want to lie, I don't want to say, it is just a walk in the park, because everybody's situation is not going to be the same, but in my situation, it's just not been that easy, and I feel like, too, another thing that, you know, you need to think about, if this is multiple children for you, and you have smaller children, you're not going to be able to just sit down and recover peacefully like you did with your other child, you know, when you had your first baby or even me with my second baby because the older one was at school. I was able to just sit down and relax all day and take it easy and, you know, concentrate. Now, that is not possible. I mean, I was up and having to do things the day we got home from the hospital. You know, even though it hurt so bad, and there was days where I was like, I know I'm going to rip my incision open on accident. There, it's just things that you have to do. You know, you you can't just stop your whole entire life, you know, because this happened. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not a walk in the park, but it's definitely worth it. Um, it's definitely worth it. And as far as holding goes, um, <clears throat> he's great. <coughs> Excuse me. He is kind of on a little bit of a schedule for sleeping wise for himself. Um, during the day, uh, the morning time he gets up, he kind of cluster feeds for. I'd say like three or four hours. He'll nurse like every 45 minutes to an hour till around lunchtime. And then he takes a like a pretty long nap around lunchtime. Like he will sleep anywhere between like 12 something to like three or four ish. And then he gets up, he'll nurse um, quite a while, like nurse for probably like 30 to 45 minutes. And then he'll go back to sleep, and he'll sleep for another good two to three hours. Um, and then he's up for um, seven-ish till around like 10 or 11. And then he goes, he sleeps from like 10 or 11 till anywhere between two and four, something like that. And he wakes up, and then he'll nurse and he's usually up by six again. <laughs> like, it's, it's just kind of like very sporadic. That's just what it's been for the past few days, but he's doing really good with, um, nursing, like I said. It's not a walk in the park. You know, it's, it's hard, but, um, like I said, 
very much worth it. He's still in newborn clothes. They're still kind of big. Um, if he wasn't so long, I think that newborn clothes would, I would have to have preemie clothes. Um, but he's so long, like his arms and legs are so long that the newborn clothes fit him. They're big, but they fit him. Um, people have been so nice because I didn't really have any newborn clothes because I didn't expect for him to be so small. Uh, so they've been, when they come over and bring food or something, they've been bringing me, um, some outfits. So it's been really, it's been nice to get some little newborn clothes because I didn't want to go buy anything because I didn't know how fast he would grow, but obviously it's going to be around a month or so that he's going to wear this. Um, let's see, what else? He's still in newborn diapers. Preemie diapers would fit him, but I only had one package, so those are gone. So he's still wearing newborn diapers. He is like a pooping machine. Like every time he farts, <laughs> he poops because <laughs> it's so watery. You know how breast breastfed poop is. Um, but he poops pretty much every time he eats. He always has a wet diaper. I feel like between Change and Edison, which by the way. Edison probably would be potty trained by now if every time he told me that he needed to go to the potty, I could actually get up and go. Like, it never fails. I'll try. Like, before I start nursing, I'm like, Edison, do you need to go potty? He's like, nope, don't need to go potty. The moment I get him latched and he's, like, sucking, I have a let down. He's, like, going at it. Edison comes, I gotta go potty. I'm like, holy crap. So there has been a couple times where I've been able to keep him latched and nursing and go take him to the restroom, but for the most part, that doesn't happen. But anyway, so yeah, Edison would probably be potty trained by now if I could stop nursing the baby for one minute. Um, so yeah, between changing Edison and Holden, like, I feel like that's all I do, but that's okay. Uh, but overall, for two weeks, postpartum. Everything is awesome. Um, emotionally, it's hard, and I'm not probably emotionally as healed as I am physically. Um, like I said, there's days where I, Wayne comes home, and I'm like, I just need a minute. Like, I feel like I'm gonna cry. I've already cried like six times today. Can you know? Can you just give me a minute? And he's very good about helping me. He, I mean, he's wonderful. So, and he knows. Like he can tell on my face when he gets home. He's like, okay, um, sorry, I'll I'll take the baby for a second. <laughs> and you know, part of me feels like I wish I could pump because then I could pump and give him the let Wayne give him a bottle. And let, you know, let me have a little bit of a break, but I don't know. Anyway, that's a whole nother subject. So if you have any questions or comments or anything, uh, please leave them below. I am, um, I'm trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to find like a niche with YouTube as far as making videos goes. Um, you know, I know I want to do this for my own video making, remembering purposes, but, you know, I don't necessarily do this for money or anything like that because I don't, I haven't made any. <laughs> um, I just do it for, you know, the friends that I've made and, you know, the people that are interested in our lives and for ourselves. And, you know, if there's a kind of a niche that I could get into, maybe cooking videos and, you know, crafts and things like that that I do outside of, you know, just my normal everyday things. Maybe I could do something like that, but I don't know. It's hard after you have a baby and you've had a focus for a video for so long to, you know, find another focus. So, anyway, I will talk to everybody soon. Um, I will update you. I'm going to try to do a weekly update, at least on him. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.